Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our virtual Saturday Academy. I am your anchor, Daytuan Antonetti, Community School Navigator, Frank Sedita, and boy, do we got a great show for you guys today. So thank you for joining our Healthy Body and Mind Virtual Saturday Academy. So we have some great schools that have some great vendors uh, with us today that have some really good activities for you. So we have Lafayette International Community High School, Mr. Elmer Santos. And I believe we have a video from Ms. Jones. So Elmer, if you wanna go ahead and play that. Uh, actually, Tony, you can go ahead. The video is for Riverside. Oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. So then, well, that brings me to our next school. We have Riverside Community High School with our fabulous Marisol Gomez. All right, so now play that video. We have a video from Ms. Jones. Saturday Academies. This is a perfect opportunity for you to become more engaged, for us to help you to feel more comfortable and connected between home and school. During this pandemic, we are always trying to find ways to stay connected to help families navigate through this virtual learning. It has not always been easy, but we are here to support you. Riverside Academy will hold their first virtual Saturday Academy on February 27th. To find more information, please follow us on our school Facebook page, our Buffalo Public School webpage, and the Buffalo Public Community School site. It is my pleasure to welcome you, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you, and take care. I'll see you soon. Oh, thank you, Ms. Jones. Beautiful message. Uh, well, we also have joining us today, we have our counselor from uh, Middle early high or college high school, Mr. James Dykeman. And then we also have with us uh, principal of research laboratory, Miss Angela Cullen, and she wanted to actually give us some words as well. So Mr. James Dykeman, we'll have you go first. Uh, you gotta mute yourself there. Look down on bottom left for your microphone. There you there go. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Dykeman from Middle Early College High School. Uh, we're located at the Bennett campus. We share the facility with uh, Bennett as well as Research Lab. Um, so we just wanted to share, share with you a brief presentation on our high school. Um, so basically, uh, we're a small um, high school in, in Buffalo. We have probably less than 100 students per graduating class. Um, it opened initially in 2013 uh, by Bill and Melinda Gates. Um, that's when they first started their uh, initiative with Middle Early College um, and initiatives. Uh, it was the second high school to open in the country. Our founding principal, uh, Susan M. Doyle, she just retired this past July after 41 years of being in the district. Um, we're entering the 18th year as a school, um, and we have a 94% graduation rate. Um, first of all, we're family first and foremost. Um, we're unified in our mission to help all of our students find academic um, life and personal achievement. We're welcoming and nurturing. Uh, we're true to who we say we are. Our mission does not deviate. We're fast paced. Here you, excuse me, here for you and your child who are always accessible. How does it work? I'll go over briefly the curriculum in ninth grade. Of course, you have to take your four core classes. That's not gonna deviate from middle, early, or any other high school. You have to take your math, your ELA, your science, your history, which is global studies. In addition to that, with your electives, you take health, you take physical education, uh, you take a science lab, which is accompanied, you know, with biology or earth science. We also have computers in Spanish. Um, we also have our focus class, which is very specific to college preparation. We really look for those students who are mature, who are focused, who are prepared to take college level courses. So it really um, goes on the framework of the seven habits of highly successful teens. Um, also, we have a mandatory summer program, which is a big component of our curriculum in grade nine, in grade 10, in four weeks, mainly in July, you'll be taking math and ELA enrichment 
um, for say three hours a day and then physical education for two and a half to three hours per day. So you'll take that the summer after your ninth grade and the summer after your 10th grade. So you'll earn a quarter credit those summers. So what that enables you to do is once you're a senior in high school, then you're able to um, participate full time either at ECC and or Buff State. Per New York State, you need um, two credit hours of gym class. So you typically would earn those a half credit each year. But if you take those quarter credits in the summer, then that would uh, eliminate it um, come your senior year. So then it enables you to be on the campus. Mr. Dykeman? Full time at ECC City or Buff State. Mr. Yes. Dykeman, thank you so much for this information. Yes. Um, I think this is uh, meant for middle early, the breakout room. Um, it, uh, we're just doing introductions right now. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought you wanted me to get right into the presentation. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That'll be like around 10, 15. So we're going to, um, you know, uh, give it back to Daytuan here. He's going to introduce our next principal. Thank you. I apologize. That's okay. We're all good, Mr. Dykeman. You know, it's a wacky Saturday. <laughs> Sorry Today about that. I, I, okay. <laughs> Things are going, you know. I was ready to go. Too much coffee. Hey, there you go. But we know you're ready, though. All right. So moving on. Uh, <laughs> so again, we have with us our principal from Research Laboratory, uh, Principal Angela Cullen. So if you want to go ahead and say a few words. Sure. Good morning. Research Lab is happy to welcome you to Virtual Saturday Academy. We are thrilled that we are continuing this partnership with both the district and Say Yes, and it is a great way to encourage engagement outside of the regular um, school day. I'm thrilled with all of our vendors that are here as well. We've had some great um, activities over the years, and I know it's going to be great today as well. Just uh, real quickly, Research Lab, we are a science-based school. We're in our fifth year, and um, we're always looking for new um, prospective students who are super interested in science. We have fantastic partnerships with University of Buffalo and the medical campus. So. If you're interested in learning more, please check out our website and everybody have a great day today at Saturday Academy. Awesome, thank you so much, uh, Principal Cullen. So of course, none of this will be possible without two key important players and individuals. One, Northwest Buffalo Community Center. We have to shout out our, shout out our CBO because, because of them and their diligent hard work, they are able to help uh, bless you all with the providers that you guys are gonna see today and experience the activities and events that uh, will be shown through Zoom. And of course, we don't wanna leave out our superintendent, Dr. Cash, because without him and his vision, none of this would be possible. So again, huge shout out to Northwest Buffalo Community Center and our superintendent, Dr. Uh, Kreiner Cash. So folks, as I mentioned earlier today, our theme is healthy body and mind. That's our virtual Saturday Academy. And boy, do we have some really great activities lined up for you guys. We have bacon snickerdoodles, storytelling, STEM demos, playwriting, African dance and drumming. Boy, I wish I could be there. I need to get a little more upbeat right now. But we got some boxing, mindfulness, and a whole lot more. So without further ado, the breakout rooms are opening up right now. So students, you guys are going to be shout out to your, to your classes. If you're in the wrong class, by all means, come back to the break room, and one of our tech people will get you squared away and put you and place into your right class. But um, while we're doing that, I would like to introduce our first presenter in the main room. We have joining us, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chef Steve Foreman. Mr. Foreman, are you there? What's going on? How's everybody doing? Oh man, we're doing well. It's so good to see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hear you about to cook up something really good in the kitchen over there. Yeah, we're going to make something, you know, simple but flavorful. You know, we're going to make what we call snickerdoodle cookies. Um, uh, actually, there's a big story behind snickerdoodle cookies. Um, it's actually what got me started uh, in the culinary field uh, back in eighth grade. Um, the, that's how I actually got into uh, becoming a chef is that in eighth grade, uh, our social studies teacher, she wanted us to uh, make a, a colonial dinner. And so she gave all of the students a recipe to go home with and make it and bring it back the next day for our colonial dinner because we were learning about the colonial days. So I knew nothing about uh, cooking at all in eighth grade. And uh, so I took the recipe home. She gave me snickerdoodle cookies. And so my mother uh, taught me what to do with the recipe. 
and I thought it was awesome, and I made them. I brought them to uh, school the next day, and we had our meal, and everybody loved the snickerdoodle cookies. So what I did was I made snickerdoodle cookies every day for one full year. Ooh. Every day. Wow. That takes so My father finally came home and said, you make one more snickerdoodle cookie. <laughs> So that's what we're going to do today. So are we ready? Can we jump right into it? It's all you, Chef Steve. Take it away. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody out there. Again, my name is Steve Foreman. I am an, a certified executive chef. Um, I'm also the executive chef uh, that oversees the Bills Stadium and the Sabres Arena uh, on behalf of Delaware North. I'm uh, an executive chef for the Delaware North Company, and we're the ones that operate food service and the Bills Stadium and in the Sabres Arena downtown at Key Bank Center. So today, as I said earlier, we're going to make uh, snicker doodle cookies. A very, very simple recipe, but it's very flavorful. I wanna walk you through the recipe, but explain a few uh, technical terms, because I feel like a lot of times people, when they get in the kitchen, in their mind, they see the elaborate dish that they just may have saw in a magazine, or they just saw in a commercial, or whatever, which is great. That's where you want to be. But in order to get there, there are certain uh, tips and techniques that um, are very important for us to navigate through in order to achieve the goal. So, of course, the first thing is we have to have a recipe. I believe many of you uh, have a recipe that was given to you besides the ingredients uh, to make today's stick noodles. So, if you want to get your recipe out, get your ingredients all together and put them in front of you, in your kitchen or wherever. Uh, students, if you're at home with your parents, make sure you're in a nice area where your mom won't get mad at you after you dirty it all up. So that's what we wanna make sure of, just be careful of that. When I was doing this, I used to, I used to trash the kitchen, but uh, my mother made me stay right in the kitchen and clean it all up. I couldn't leave and go outside to play football until I cleaned it up. So we wanna make sure we, we cook clean and neatly. So, the first thing you want to do after you get your recipe is in the recipe, there are a list of ingredients. What you want to make sure is you have all of your ingredients. And in the culinary world or in the kitchen terms, we have a word to describe being prepared. That word is called mise en place. Say it with me. Mise en place. One more time. Mise en place. What does that mean? It's a French word to mean things in place. So you want to make sure you have everything. There you go. You got to make sure you have everything. That means all of your ingredients besides your tools that you're going to be using to make sure the food comes out accurate. So you want to have your measuring cups, your measuring spoons. You want to make sure you have a fork. You want to make sure you have your bowl. You want to make sure you have a mixer. You might have or you might not have one of these. You know, I have a, a, a professional mixer. Um, but if you don't, we're still going to be able to produce the, the cookies by using a whisk and bowls, okay? So now that we got our mise en place, that's very, very important. Please remember that word. It's applicable, meaning you can apply that word in your everyday life. Always be organized, be ready to go. Start the day off organized, finish the day organized, and you'll be very successful, okay? And be efficient. So now the first thing we want to do is we're going to do uh, what we call the creaming method. Now the creaming method, and I might be throwing a lot of information. So, if, you know, if it's like, that's too much, just wait till at the end, you can ask me a question about the specific terms. But it's important because if you don't follow these simple tips and techniques, the product might not come out the way you, you were expecting it to come out. So the creaming method is first measuring out the dry ingredients, then measuring out the moist ingredients, making sure the two of them are mixed thoroughly. Then you incorporate the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients or the moist ingredients. So what we're gonna do first is measure out our dry ingredients. So we have flour, we have salt, we have baking soda, we have cream of tartar, and we have cinnamon. So let's start off with that. Your recipe calls for one and a half cups of flour. So let's do that. So we're gonna scoop our measuring cup into the bag of flour. Now this is a little trick that I thought was so cool when my mother first taught me so many years ago. I thought this was the coolest thing. 
So you take the back of your knife and you just scrape the top of the mixing cup, mixing, yeah, and it makes it level. So you have one full cup. So you have a proper measurement because measurement is very, very important when it comes to baking. Now I'm going to take my half cup. See how I'm messy already? Look at that. You get flour everywhere. It's getting all over the place. Oh my goodness. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So now again, going to take the back of the knife and we're going to measure that. Now I have a perfectly measured one and a half cups of flour. All right, let's get that out of the way. Next thing, look at this, look at this. Got all this mess here, Lord have mercy. All right, now next, one teaspoon of cream of tartar. So that's why you need a measuring cup. You wanna make sure your measurements are accurate. So I got a teaspoon. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did earlier. We put the measurement in there. We take the back of the, um, we measure that, bam. One teaspoon of cream of tartar. Then we're gonna take right here as our baking soda. Now the fun thing about this is, if you look and you open it up and you, you put half a teaspoon of this, that's a half a teaspoon, oh, no it's not. Make sure we have the right measurements here. Come on, chef, make sure you have the right measurements. Here we go, half a teaspoon. Now, look at the, the, the little uh, square edge there. You see that, look at that, makes it a perfect. Perfect. Gonna put that in there, bam. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, something's wrong with, yeah, put me back to where. Are we, we still see you. Oh, okay, cause I'm, okay, my other, okay, cool. Yeah, All right. Good. Salt, quarter teaspoon of salt. I really don't measure, I don't. Uh, there you go, quarter, bam. You put that in there. Now our cinnamon, our cinnamon is three quarters of a cup. So they don't make a three quarters cup teaspoon. So what they'll do is I'll use a half and I'll use a quarter, which will equal three quarters. So again, you wanna make sure you measure properly. There's my half. And I believe the ingredients we gave you guys are all measured out, so you should be fine as you follow. Just put all of your dry ingredients together that I just did. There we go. Now, what we have here, we have the ingredients of the flour, cream of tartar, we have the baking soda, and we have the cinnamon. You're gonna take your whisk. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, now, hey, real quick, technician, uh, put Steve Foreman's screen back to the main because you guys put me over by the aerobics. Steve Foreman, or Steve Foreman number two. Steve Foreman is uh, the one my son is holding. Screen number two I need back on in my main uh, screen, main room. Can you guys do that? Yes, I will do that right now. Thank you. I don't know how I got switched over there, but sorry. All right, so we got our dry ingredients. We'll put these aside. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a separate bowl, and now we're gonna put our moist ingredients in our bowl. So what we have is butter. You should all have a stick of butter. Now, before we go any further, one of the bigger things you wanna do is you wanna make sure your oven is preheated. I have my oven at 375 preheated. I'm also going to take my cookie sheet that I'm going to bake the cookies on and the one stick of butter that you're going to need to cook the cookies. I'm just going to take it and rub it on the top of the pan just so it's greased up. Just a little bit. See what I did? Boom, boom, boom. So, the, so my... You guys need to put both my cameras on the main screen, into the main room. Yeah, I only see one, uh, Steve, so we're gonna look into that, okay? But for now, we this. can see you. I can only see one camera listed here. I have two on. 
Yeah, uh, let me give me a second. I will look for the other one. Okay, for for now you can continue with this one, okay. and I will the look for the other. Right. I can't show them things that the camera will let them see. They're only going to see me. Okay, right. So let me uh, look for the other device. The other camera, the other one right now is in. You have me over where the aer aer aerobics is. Regina Williams, I think, or something. So. Get your butter now. If you guys have your ingredients at home, get the one stick of butter. You're gonna take the butter. I know you can't see it, but they really can't see. So you're gonna cut a piece of the butter. Just one stick of butter. Okay, now I cut it up. And the reason why I cut up the butter it'll be easier for me to mix the sugar in with it. So the creamy method is now I take the sugar and I'm gonna add the butter and I'm gonna add it to the butter and we're gonna mix it. That's what's gonna make it the creamy method also. So the same thing, you're gonna measure it out. Three quarters of a cup of sugar and I got a quarter cup here so I'm gonna do three of them. And again, you should have all of this measured out at home already. So there you go, three quarters cup. And now I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my, uh, you know what, they can't even hear me with the no, watch. We, we can hear you and we can actually see you. So the camera that your son is holding as he's videotaping down, we're watching every step that you're making. Oh, you are? Okay. For yeah. some reason, it's not. Okay, cool. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So All right, perfect. We can see everything. I just want to make sure of that. So what you're going to do is you're going to mix. You're going to want to mix it. And now this is going to take a little bit of time because you want to make sure that you're mixing it all together. So you're just going to squish the sugar into it. Now, the thing about cooking, you want to know that you got to take your time. You got to let everything work its process through. You got to make sure that everything is, is the way it's supposed to be. So even though it might take a few extra seconds to keep pushing the uh, butter back through because it gets caught up in the whisk, that's okay. You want to make sure that you're incorporating everything. So you're going to mix this. This is called the creaming method. We're going to mix this around a little bit as we keep doing it. So it's okay if you're if you're going through the same situation with your bowl and with your whisk. That's okay. You're just softening up the butter, and you're making sure that you're mixing the sugar and the butter together. So once you get it like this, a little coarse, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your one egg. You want to take your one egg. Uh, And you're gonna now get you a little bowl. Cause what you're gonna do is you're gonna crack the egg and you're gonna mix the egg up. So that way you can pour a little bit at a time into the sugar and the butter. So we crack our egg, bam. We take our fork and now we're whisking it. Perfect. That way you'll be able to mix in the uh, uh, egg into your sugar and butter. So we're going to add a little bit, just a little bit, not a lot, not all of it. You don't want to do it all at once. Oh, woo. So again, you're just going to keep mixing it together. You want to mix it together here, making sure it's all incorporated. Now I'm doing it this way because a lot of people may not have a mixer like this as I have. And typically I would just mix everything together in my mixer, you know, with the liquid first and, and but I'm gonna show you how to just keep doing it like this. So you can mix it, incorporate it together, making sure it's thorough. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my spat now. So I'm gonna fold it in, keep folding it, keep mixing it. And it's okay, because remember, your butter is at room temperature, so it's soft enough to mix it. So you just want to make sure that the egg is getting incorporated. Doesn't matter how much you fold and mix it right now. You just want to make sure everything's incorporated. So now we're going to add the rest of the egg. And at this time, you're going to add your vanilla bean. Now, again, all of your stuff is measured out already. So I'm going to do a half a cap, which equals a quarter of a teaspoon, which it says on the recipe. 
Here we are now, we're gonna mix it. Make sure it's all mixed together. We're creaming our sugar and we're creaming our butter together with the egg. The egg is an important ingredient for the structure of the cooking process with the cookie. It helps it build the structured walls because egg is a protein. So you see how it's nicely mixing up now? See that? Oh yeah. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Now we're working. Look at that. And you see some of that butter flex? That's okay. See that butter? You can still see some of the butter flex there and everything. That'll be all right. Okay. Now, here we are. We are in our juncture now. What we have is we have our dry ingredients and we have our moist ingredients with the sugar creamed together. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to now fold our flour mixture, which has the cream of tartar, the baking soda, um, uh, and the uh, salt and the cinnamon. And we're going to fold it into the sugar butter mixture. Now we're going to cream it together. And that way it will make this, the, the dough itself. Now, the reason why you don't want to mix in the flour in the beginning with the egg and the sugar and the butter is because flour produces gluten. It's very important to understand all these te techniques because the one thing you want to be able to have is a nice, soft, flavorful cookie. But if you over whip flour when it gets wet, like once we start adding it to the wet moist, the uh, moist ingredients, once that flour gets wet, it starts activating the gluten. It starts activating what causes bread and everything to rise besides yeast. So there's gluten in this. You don't want to activate it until you're ready to do it quickly, fold it quickly, because the more you whip it, the more you fold it in, once it's wet, it's creating more um, gluten strands, which will then make your cookies tough. It will make them tough, and you don't want a tough cookie. You want a nice, soft, chewable cookie, something that's enjoyable, something that everybody in the family would be like, oh my God, this is amazing. That's what you want. So here we go. Now what we're going to do is, we're not gonna pour it in all at once. We're gonna do it in se segments. So do a little bit of flour. So you guys should be working with me. You that have your ingredients at home, you're gonna fold in your flour. Okay, see the dough forming? See that dough forming? Hopefully you at home, are working with me and yours should start looking like this. See how the flour has been absorbed by the moisture? There you go, now we're gonna add some more, right? And we're gonna fold it in again. Now this much mixing doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're doing this much mixing. It's because you've already mixed the butter and the sugar, you cream that together, all we're doing now is adding the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients and we're folding it in. This much mixing is not gonna be a problem, but if you started way in the beginning was mixing it all this time, it would have definitely created a problem. Remember the creaming method, very important. Remember mise en place, very important to remember. Now at this stage, it gets a little more difficult you got to stir with a little bit more force because now the moisture is being absorbed is absorbing the flour making the dough a little bit firmer which is okay that's what you want because you want a dough that forms so we can make um cookie uh shapes all right so we got that last but not least a little bit that we have there and now we're going to fold it together and again, you're going to see it getting dry. It's okay. The dough is forming. And at this point, if you would like, your hands should have been clean because you should have washed them before. You should have been washed while you got up, right? Now you wash your hands before you work, which I did. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate it like this. Now my cookie dough. Oh, yeah. 
I can feel the flour being absorbed by the butter, by the egg, by the moisture. See that? Oh yeah. You can see the flour being absorbed. We're slowly getting to have a cookie dough. Hmm? Look at this. So if you're at home, you should be at this point right now with your dough. See that? So here you are now, you have your cookie dough. Doesn't that look great? Look at all that. Looking mighty tasty there, Chef Steve. <laughs> so, of course, you got to rinse your hands off now, get all that sugar off your hand. So now what I would do is I would, you don't have to do this now, but I would put it in the refrigerator. I would let my cookie dough get a little cold, okay? What I could do is I can cut it in half and shape it into logs. Then I could take some... Uh, Saran wrap, I can wrap it in saran wrap like I did here. And I'm about to cut this now. This is when it, this was in the refrigerator. So I already made some dough. And what I'll do is now I can cut it in the equal pieces. So what, the, what I'll do is I'll do that right now. Look at that. Hmm? I told you it's going to get a little messy, isn't it? I told you. Take a nice sharp knife. All right, and here we go. Look at that, perfectly shaped cookies. Put them on a greased cutting board, because remember, I greased the cutting board earlier. Remember when I took my stick butter and I rubbed some uh, butter onto the cookie pan? So now, when I bake my cookies, they won't stick to the pan, they'll come off nice and easy. But look at how easy this is, look at that. Look at these cookies, huh? Okay, now let's talk about some variations we can make with this cookies. Remember I told you in the beginning, I made cookies, snickerdoodle cookies every single day for one full year. I did so many things. I filled them with peanut butter. I filled them with jelly. I filled them with chocolate chip. I filled them with licorice. I filled them with uh, candies. I, filled, I just went nuts. I just did all kinds of things. One of the best things I love to do, and I've learned with the snickerdoodle, I would take a lemon, okay? Take a whole lemon, and then I would take this, which is called a microplane or a zester, if you got a zester at home, and I would take the lemon, and I would rub the lemon over the zester so the zest falls onto the lemon. And so what will happen is once it bakes, the essence of the lemon peel is in the snickerdoodle cookie and it gives it that nice citrusy uh, lemon scent as you're eating. Phenomenal. It goes great with the cinnamon base and the sugar and the butter that's all incorporated into your cookie dough. Absolutely phenomenal. Or you can take some more sugar if you want, like I have here, and you can sprinkle it over the top so it has a little bit more of a sweeter taste and you can dash a little bit more cinnamon over the top if you would like. You can also do that. There's a number of things you can do with this dough. But now that we've already cut it, we've greased the pan, we put it on here. Now we're gonna throw it in our oven, 375 degrees. Now what I would do, this is a trick. It's a little, little information trick that'll help make your cookies even better. As you watch them cook, keep peeking in the oven and close it. You wanna pull your cookies out just a little bit before they're done. Why? Because when you pull them out and you let them sit on your counter, it's what we call residual heat, meaning the cookie is still hot, even though it's out of the oven, which is still cooking the cookie dough a little bit longer, even though it's sitting on your counter, but it's not drying it out as if, as if it was in your oven. So now you're going to have a nice, soft, moist cookie instead of a bitter or brittle cookie or a hard cookie. Now, I have some that are already done.
Look at this. So this one, so these I pulled out a little bit later. So you see this? You should have it a little bit moist. This one I pulled out a little bit later. I, I, I should have pulled it earlier, but I got to talking. That's why it's good to have a timer. Yikes, right? But you want to be able to have a nice soft cookie. This one's not as soft as I would like it. However, it's still. Mm, very good cookie. Very, very good cookie. So we want to go. Shouldn't eat with my mouth on, right? <laughs> shouldn't talk with my mouth on. The food in it. So remember, recipe mise en place. The creamy method: moist and dry ingredients mixed thoroughly. Adding the dry ingredients to the moist ingredients, a little bit at a time, folding it and mixing it together. Then after the dough forms, cut it in half, roll it into logs, wrap cellophane around it, put it in your refrigerator for let's say maybe an hour. Take the dough out, unroll it, cut it just like, you, just like I showed you, and bam, you have phenomenal cookies that you can put on your cookie sheet, put it in the oven at 300, and 75 degrees between eight to 10 minutes. Now it's very important when you're reading a recipe and the cooking time, that cooking time on that recipe is based on somebody's oven somewhere else. My oven might be different calibrated. It might not, mine might not be running actually at 375. Your oven might not be actually operating at 375. Ovens over time, they get miscalibrated. So what happens is the 375 dial actually maybe 365 inside your oven. And that just happens, it's wear and tear on your equipment. So it's important to just go by an estimated time between eight to 10 minutes. So you check it after eight minutes and it might need a little bit more time or you can just take it out after eight minutes. So it's very important to be thinking about those things, okay? So that is how you make snicker doodle cookies. Now, students, let me encourage you a little bit, okay? I talked to a lot of youth and I talked to a lot of kids in mentoring and, and, and different programs. And I try to talk to them about how my cooking experience allowed me to learn certain disciplines from my everyday life. And one of the words I taught you was mise en place, meaning to have things in place, to be organized. And I also said how it's important to have to start with a recipe. The recipe are all the ingredients that are absolutely necessary to get the results of that picture you saw, that cookie, that dish, that um, that chicken dish or that steak or that seafood dish. And in order for you to make your food look like what you just saw in that TV show or on that magazine or whatever, you have to have the right recipe. It's just like that in your life. There are things for life that you need to have, a recipe for life, a recipe for success. And it's so important to always follow the recipe perfectly. And so I tell people is one of the greatest uh, ingredients in life that you need is your education. It's important to make sure you get your education. That is an important ingredient for life. Now at the top of my recipe, I'm just telling you at the top of my recipe, I put God first. Now, what's the measurement? Man, I want all of God, okay? There ain't no just a cup of God or half of God. I want all of them. And then after that, I start adding the other important things in my life to be successful. And so where I'm at today, I've been able to learn all of these great things and do great things because I keep the ingredients in my recipe for life. I keep them in the proper order with the right measurements. So I hope you enjoyed today. Uh, is there any questions about uh, the cookies? Anything? Amen to that. But yes, we do have some questions for you, uh, Chef Steve. So the first question was, can you repeat the ingredients and where can they get the recipe? So the recipe... Ooh, we. So we provided, I think, uh, I don't know how many families actually got the uh, package, but all of the recipe, um, they could probably go to, uh, I mean, my website, I have a website, it's called buffalocookingclass.com. You can go there, or you can go to my Facebook page. I have a company that is called Time and Honey. And the way you spell that is T H Y M E dash n dash honey and you go to my facebook page time and honey there is definitely recipes on there i believe there's a snickerdoodle recipe on there 
All of the ingredients, though, can be found um, at any store. And it's really simple. It was just simply flour, sugar, butter, cream of tartar, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, I think I already said that, vanilla, egg. That was it. Very, very simple. So the recipe, go to my Time and Honey Facebook page. You should be able to find some things in there. Awesome. And then the other question we have, um, have you cooked in France or any other countries? Have I? Oh, I'm only American right now. I haven't been able to go to any other country, but I plan to get there soon one day. Definitely. I would love to go to Spain. I would love to go to Africa. And I would love to go to Thailand. I would love to go there to learn those cuisines firsthand right at the right in the depth of their culture and find the tricks that we might not learn over here in America. I mean, I could learn Spanish cooking here and I know Spanish cooking. I can learn Thai cooking and I know Thai cooking. I can learn African cooking and I know African cooking. But when you get into the culture, when you go to the country, there are so many little tricks that we wouldn't know about here in America. Yeah, well, definitely. Well, when you go, you could take me with you. You know, I'll, I'll be your right hand, man. All right, I, I, I got you there. And then uh, one last question here. Are you a Buffalo native? No, I am not. I'm not uh, a Buffalo native. But I, I'm a New York State native, though. I'm from, uh, I'm from upstate New York, around Saratoga Springs. Right, in the so Adirondacks. So this yeah, be I'm not from Buffalo. I moved here in, uh, uh, when did I move? Oh, in 1989 to finish college. I'm a Buff State graduate. So I went to Bus State, finished there. And then, um, I, uh, like I said, I just stayed here. But um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not originally from Buffalo. But I think I'm a Buffalonian now. I've been here since 89. I mean, come on now. I've got to have the card now. Yeah, I think that about make you official. So here's the million dollar question. Are you a diehard Bills fan? Ooh. Oh, this is a breaker. This is a breaker. Be careful. Be careful now. You got to be careful. OK, OK. Okay, okay, okay. I would keep 100. I would keep 100. 100, 100. <laughs> I got here, I got here in 89. Uh, That's when they started winning championships. Then they went to the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, because I wasn't raised in Buffalo, I didn't start off as a Buffalo fan. And then when they went through their dark periods, I was like, yo, I'll never be a Bills fan. Ever, ever. I will never be a Bills fan. Okay, okay. But now... Uh, now, I, 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 you can call me a bandwagon fan. I'll accept that because I get it. But I will say this. <laughs> I think Josh Allen is the truth. I think he's excellent. I think the team they have now, McDermott, the coach, is awesome. And all because I cook for them. You know, I'm the, I'm the Bill Stadium uh, executive chef, and so I oversee the team feeding and everything. Um, in the last, several, last couple of years, I've started to – you know, look at them more objectively and be like, you know, they're a respectful team. So now I'm not going to say I'm the, I'm not in the mafia yet. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm courting. We're, we're dating right now. <laughs> I like it. Well, nice job cleaning that up. Way to go. Way to go. And great questions to, uh, to our participants out there. So, uh, Chef Steve, thank you so much. Snickerdoodles look great. I hope I could have, you know, wish I could have taste one, but I'm going to have yeah, to wait yeah. till I make it down the road. But again, thank you so much for joining us today today and we definitely look forward to having you on some future academies appreciate it all right take care boss all right folks so that takes us to our little we have a little transition here we got a little zoom to teams commercial that we want to present to you guys our virtual academies will be moving from zoom to teams beginning February 6th. Many of you are already familiar with Teams, so we look forward to seeing you. That's right. All Buffalo Community Schools will begin running their own individualized virtual Saturday Academy starting February 6th. And we want you guys all to come back and join in and take fun in all the amazing programs that we're gonna offer for all ages and for all members of the community. You can help us make a big difference in everyone's lives. Hope to see you there. Make sure you check out the Buffalo Public Schools website to check out all virtual Saturday Academy activities and Microsoft Teams link to get all the information for virtual Saturday Academy. Be sure to ask your community school navigator for more information. Be sure to also tell all your classmates, friends, and families to participate. See you then. We don't want any of you to miss out on all the fun activities we have planned for you. 
We want you to stay connected, engaged, and safe. Virtual Saturday Academy programs will be offered through each of the community schools on Teams beginning February 6th. And remember, we are here for you and open to everyone. So that's right, folks. You've heard it. We're moving from Zoom to Teams. So hopefully this will make life much easier for our students and for our teachers. And again, we really want the students to get involved reach out to your local uh, neighborhood community school navigator, you know, share with them your ideas, um, thoughts, as far as what type of activities you would like to see offer. And, you know, just really help us out. You know, we want to hear from you guys, because again, this is all about you. So help us out to create the best programming that we possibly can uh, starting in the month of February, where each school will have their own individualized virtual Saturday academies. So we look forward to hearing from you guys, all right? So without further ado, we are going to bring up our, ne our next guest, which is Alex Fernandez from uh, STEM, STEAM, and he's part of Young Audiences of Western New York. Alex? Hey, Tuan, good to see you again. It's yeah, been a while. Good to see you, man. It has been a while, man. Hey, yeah, the Bell Center, my friend. Back. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hello, everybody. So happy to be here to join everybody. So uh, are we... Well, Yep, we're all set, man. So Alex, just, you know, kind of take it away and let us know what, what you're about to uh, show us here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by just sharing my screen here. I believe I can share uh, what I have going on on my browser. So let me go ahead and just start by doing that. All right. And let me know if you can see my screen here. Yep, we can see your screen, Perfect. Alex. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to open up another website here. It's called vrbuffalo.org. And for anybody who's on right now or anybody who wants to follow along afterwards, uh, what you'll be able to do is be able to go ahead and take a look at this website as a reference and use it as a way to go ahead and get access to not just the uh, slide deck that we're using, but also the information that uh, you know will proceed there both on the website. Is everybody still able to see VR Buffalo there on my page here? Yes. Yes, sir. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So the website VR Buffalo, um, I'll just start off by introducing myself. Daytuan, first of all, thank you for the intro. Um, I, you know, I've been a part of the Buffalo public system for a long, long time. Uh, my focus here is to talk a little bit about STEAM and, and what I kind of specialize in is STEAM literacy. And uh, what I mean by that is kind of a, a combination of things here. And, and I'm just going to open this up so we can quickly talk here. Uh, Everybody able to see full screen uh, the, the slide deck? Yes, sir. Perfect, perfect. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna step into slide number two. Uh, in slide number one, I do have some information. I'm gonna go back there and it's got some information if you wanna log on to the website that we're gonna be using. If anybody wants to play along, I encourage you to open up a web browser and open up a website called Tinkercad. Uh, that website is gonna be visible uh, right here, tinkercad.com. And you also have the uh, email and password. If you do not have your own account or cannot create one, there's one that I've set up for everybody to go ahead and use. So uh, just quickly to touch on STEAM, what the difference between STEM and STEAM is. STEM, we all know, science, tech, engineering, and math. It's the what and the how things are done, right? So it's really kind of the, the, the key element of, of, of what was the uh, foundation, what were the elements, what was the, the knowledge base that was used to create that. Now, the, the STEAM includes the arts, right? And the biggest difference with the arts is the why and the whom, right? So not just who is the individual that created it, but what was their inspiration? What was their motivation? Were they solving a problem? Were they trying to perfect or improve something? Uh, were, were they simply trying to make an impact on society in some way, shape, or form? Uh, and, and that creativity, that innovation, that thinking outside the box is what pushes the boundaries of science and technology. As we can see technology advancing faster and faster every day now for us, it's really important to kind of stay current and stay connected. So today we're gonna do a little activity and it's gonna be some three-dimensional design. Uh, three-dimensional design applies to so many different areas. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the main slide here so that you have a moment if you need to use the email and the password that I have set up to log on, or I encourage you to create your own account. This means you'll be able to keep your work afterwards. Uh, so, uh, Taytuan, I don't know if you can go ahead and put that in the chat just in case so that we, if people have that information available. That's the uh, HTTP 
Tinkercad.com? Correct. Tinkercad.com is the website. And then there's a temporary account that was set up if anybody needs it as a, uh, a way to kind of jump in. It'll be active at least during the session and for a little bit after today. Uh, I will be closing it down just because they're not meant to kind of stay uh, for public use for a lot of people to be in. But I, I wanted people to be able to participate today regardless. Uh, if you have access to a computer or some form of tablet, jump in and, and kind of join us on this quick little journey. I'm just gonna move right in. And what is Tinkercad? It's a free, completely free, web-based three-dimensional tool. This design tool I've used for 3D printing purposes, for manufacturing purposes. I've helped with architecture projects. I've helped with animation and, and even some kind of game design components, right? Uh, and so there's really a, a really strong foundation of tools here that will uh, kind of be an element of something that you can explore so many different career paths, right? It's not just one type of design. Design applies to so many things, and, and that's the A in the steam, right? It's, it's the creative element. It allows you to, to kind of impact and influence. And the way that we can design now is much more precise and it's also able to be done in many form factors. Like I said, you could be on your tablet. I believe iPads are able to do it. Uh, laptops, anything with a web uh, browser should be able to access this and at least view it. Uh, in order to create, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate, right? They have a, a great library of some tutorials if you wanna go through on your own time to kind of get acquainted, figure out you know, a little bit more about the tools. The, those are great. Uh, but today what I'm gonna do is kind of a simple step-by-step -step activity, right? So step number one, what's the first step? We gotta get logged in, right? So everybody needs to um, kind of just go to the website. And then once you get logged in and you've created your account, the first step will be to click on this button right here which will get you to a dashboard. And I'm gonna walk through that process right now and then create a new design, right? So creating a new design essentially just creates a work plane and that's gonna be our base plate, right? That's like a piece of paper I lay down when I'm gonna go ahead and draw with my pencil, right? So the only difference is we're using a mouse, we're using our fingers. Uh, and in some cases you can even use just your hand gestures with controllers and now that are able to see your hands and, and use your hands to design and, and push and pull and mold like you're molding a piece of clay. So let's uh, go ahead and-, and Alex, yeah. real quick, um, below where it says STEM sign in, I'm not able to see that. And I'm not sure if everyone else is actually able to see that as well. See where it says STEM, STEAM literacy sign in. Is there a code or something down below that we're supposed to see or anything? STEAM literacy sign in. Are you talking about on the website? No, on, on your uh, screen right now, underneath the, uh, hold on, I got too many windows open here. Under free STEAM literacy, there's something else below. Are we supposed to see that? It says STEAM literacy sign in. Just wanna make sure we're not missing anything. I'm not sure I'm seeing the screen that you're looking at here. I, can you see the work plane right now? Uh, am I on the, maybe I should unshare and reshare here. Looks like this might yeah, not right, be the yeah, right Because right now we're just seeing VR Buffalo and then we see free STEAM literacy, Tinkercad. I see, I see, give me one moment. How do I unshare and reshare here? Stop share. I'm just gonna reshare my screen and see if we can get my entire, it seems to be just selecting an individual window. Am I able to share my entire screen? Uh, yes, you are. So you just have to choose uh, the screen, um, you know, the screen you want to share, the whole screen. Got it, okay. okay. Let's see here. Can you see a work plane now with yeah, now we can see the work plan. Something spinning around, perfect. Yep. Can you see the website that I've gone back to? Uh, we see hands-on activity, Tinkercad. Perfect, all right, we're back. we're back to it. Okay, so main site right here, uh, it's got the links and the information if need be. This is all on vrbuffalo.com if you need a reference. Um, I was just basically describing these steps right here. So if you're gonna log into Tinkercad, we're gonna click on this logo right here, and then you're gonna click on create new design and it's gonna be this right here. All right, so I'm just gonna jump right in and go ahead and get started with the activity so you can see the, the process step-by-step. Step. Um, I've got all of these steps, as I stated, kind of detailed here on the slide deck. So I'll go through these first few, which is working with basic shapes. And the really most, the most important thing uh, when working with three-dimensional design is perspective, zoom, the ability to move, rotate, and change the scale of objects, right? Those five key elements. So we're gonna walk through those steps uh, here piece by piece. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move this out of the way here. So 
On the right-hand side, you should see I've got a number of different objects. We're only going to be working with two today. And on the left-hand side in the top corner, you've got this little box that I can grab and I can use to rotate and spin around. You can either use your scroll button or your pinch zoom to go in and out. And if you want to go back home to a home base to where your starting point is, there's a little house here that goes to home view. So the first two things that you're going to need to do are to bring these two objects onto your table. So we've got the box and we've got the roof. So those two objects are going to be centered somewhere in the middle. And what we're going to try to do is place the roof on top of this. So uh, there are different ways that you can change the size of an object. You'll see the white dots all over. And then there's also always going to be a box that will appear on selected objects, or I'm sorry, a cone that will appear on selected objects, as you can see right here on the top. This cone lets me raise it or lower it. And you can see I zoomed in a little bit to kind of get a better feel of, of the actual object and really kind of be able to work with it. So I'm gonna raise it to about 20. It doesn't need to be exact. And then I'm going to take it and I'm just gonna grab it and we can move it around and you can see the shadow underneath indicating where this is on the work plane. And I wanna place it somewhere near the top of this house, right? So I've got this on top of the house now and I wanna go ahead and just adjust the roof a little bit to kind of have an overhang so I'm just going to take and I'm going to pull these edges out a little bit. And I'm going to take and I'm going to pull this edge out a little bit. Now to make sure that everything looks good, I recommend that you get on top of this and you kind of spin around it. Take a good look at it from all your angles. Make sure that it looks and feels the way that you want it or make slight adjustments if you need to. Right? The first time that you're working with a tool like this, it's, it, it may be a little uh, difficult to line things up and, and don't expect perfection, right? You, this is something that you get better with over time. So just like any, you know, sport, any music, it's musical instrument or, or other type of art form, uh, you become more proficient and you become more comfortable over time. So let's go ahead and let's take the next few steps. I'm just going to go back to the slide deck. So you've got your reference point. If you uh, need, I can also include videos that will uh, kind of walk through these steps again. Uh, I believe possibly the live stream can be viewed again as well. So here, what you're going to be doing is, like I said, lifting that rooftop, moving it over, placing it on top using that selected cone, uh, which allows you to raise it and lower it. So the next step is going to be basically to create a fence, right? I want to go ahead and encase this house and, and, and kind of close up my property. And, and in order to do that, I'm going to use the same basic shape, right? We're going back, we're going to use a box, and we're simply going to stretch it out, right? And we want to change the color of that box, which is very easily done by the menu that you're going to see up in the top section. So I'm going to go right here, take this box. Let's start by going back home so that we know exactly what we're looking at. I can see work plane down here. And I'm going to take and drop this single box down here on the bottom of the work plane. I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to go ahead and stretch this object out. I want to make sure that I get it nice and long and thin so that it actually feels like a fence. Because again, we're not looking for perfection, right? I'm going to stretch this out again a little bit more so we've got some room. And I need to make a copy of this. There are two ways to make copies and I'm going to show you both. The first is to click on copy up here in the top. As you see, Control C is also an option on your keyboard. So I click copy and then click paste. For anybody who's ever used Word, Google Docs, created spreadsheets, slideshows, things of that nature, copy paste is kind of similar across the board. So copy paste there. There's also another way to do it. If I wanted to, I can select this object and this button right here will just duplicate. So I've duplicated that and now I've got this third wall, but the only problem is it's not lined up the way I need to, right? So I talked about a couple of elements in the beginning. I talked about perspective. Perspective is where I'm looking at this from. What's my camera angle? Zoom is how close am I? How far am I? How much can I see? How much detail can I see? And, and do I need to adjust that? Then there was move, which was the moving the objects around and, and kind of placing them in different places. And then we're going to do rotate at this point, right? So every object that you have will actually have a number of different rotation points that will appear, right? And those are for the three different axes, the X, the Y, and the Z. The X and the Y are like the two that are in front of us, the vertical and the one that goes horizontal. And the Z is us moving forward and backward. If I grab any one of these, I get a circle that allows me to rotate this object in any one of those three directions. 
the way I want to do it in this case is I want to rotate it, I'd say clockwise approximately 90 degrees. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to rotate it. And as you can see, it's notching right here in these internal notches because I'm inside the circle. Now, if I was to zoom out and do the same thing, but when I grab this, grab it from a different part and then pull it outside, my movements are precise to the individual degree, right? So if you want to be specific, you can pull it outside of the circle. If you want your rotation to snap and just be easy to get to 90 degrees, use that. For movement, again, we're just going to grab the object somewhere in the middle. We're going to move it around here, stretch it out. So now I've got my third wall. Looking for that last wall, copy and paste. Again, we know is fairly simple. I'm going to go ahead and do it with this button right here. Make sure that I select the object, copy and paste. Now I've got my duplicate, got my fence, and I close this in. Right. So let's go back and take a look. Uh, I wanted to change the color of these objects. That was the other piece that I was missing here. So let me go back and we're going to make those changes. I'm going to change my fence to more of a brown color. And I want to do that on all of these. So I can do it one at a time, or if I want, I can hold shift and I can collect multiple objects at once. So here I'm collecting one and two, and I'm going to change those both to a darker brown. Go back to the deck, make sure that we've got our reference points well. Uh, if there are any questions, Dituan, if you or anybody in the, uh, on the stream or in the chat have any questions, feel free to go ahead and, and post them or let me know, and, and I'll go ahead and either repeat some of the information or, or make sure that I answer those as specifically as I can. Uh, definitely, here, definitely. We, we're building the fence right now. If we change the color, let's move on to the next slide. So we're at slide number nine. We went ahead and we moved that around so that we have everything enclosed. And I'm going to go back and again, use perspective to zoom around that, look in and out, make sure that it looks well uh, placed, right? And because that might take some adjustment. You might move and every time you move around, you need to make a little bit of a tweak or a little bit of adjustment, right? Once you get comfortable with these basic elements, you can kind of take it to the next level. And there are some people who jump into this and are just really comfortable. And I know the younger generation is, is really into things like Minecraft and Roblox and, and kind of they're building worlds today uh, that, that are really massive creations. And, and I think the, they're going to come with an aptitude and a skill set that's going to make them so ready to be, you know, mechanical engineers or game designers or animators and, and really apply those skill sets that they've been practicing with what we consider play and toys. Uh, and really apply it into, you know, a, a designated path. So this is why I try to share this with as many people as possible so they can get an understanding of how easy it is to grasp, to get a basic understanding. And if you become interested, there are so many free resources to allow you to kind of take that knowledge further, right? So next is I got to put some grass underneath my house. So here I am, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take the, the, L, the box once again, my simplest piece. I'm going to zoom out so that I got some room. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to make this very big. So I'm going to take, I'm going to stretch it out all the way here. And then I want to shrink it down by using this top box. And grass is not red, so let's make sure that we turn it green. I'm going to move the object there. Last piece, let's go ahead and let's drop a tree in there. Cylinder, it's probably the easiest way to do that. So let's zoom in. It's a bit big in reference to the house, so we got to make this a little bit smaller. Let's make it a little bit taller and let's put a, a sphere on top of that. So the nice part about three-dimensional design is this applies to 3D printing. This applies to things like augmented reality and virtual reality in ways that uh, are evolving very quickly and companies are, are building divisions and these jobs that have job descriptions that have never been heard of and job titles that have never been heard of are, are popping up more and more on a daily basis. And it's really an opportunity for us to kind of, uh, you know, kind of dive into the unknown, right? And, and I think it's happening faster and faster. For those of you who might want to take this house to the next level, I encourage you to kind of just go crazy. I've, I've run this workshop with many, many uh, students ranging from like third graders up to uh, you know, post retirees and, and basically it's amazing what they can come up with when they get a grasp of it or sometimes even seeing them after a week or a month later, they say I've been working on the project and I added this and I added that. Uh, so here are a few ideas to go ahead and, and kind of build this up, expand it out, uh, you know, make it your own. And, and again, 
take these skill sets and these transferable skills and carry them into other mediums, into other tools, and continue to design uh, using these, these kind of innovative and, and creative uh, new assets that are available to us. So I have a couple of uh, videos that I'd like to show to kind of give you an understanding uh, of one of the projects I've been working on recently. Um, it, it's a, a quick snippet of a world that it was created inside of Facebook Horizon. Uh, it's an early beta, uh, an invite-only release that was basically launched, and um, they, they allowed people with the Oculus Quest to jump in and to participate and to, to kind of build worlds and, and contribute to this evolution inside of this space, right? So in this deck, should you want to kind of take a look at it, uh, I've put that, that quick little video here. I'll turn the sound off and just let me know if the video is playing back okay there, each one. Uh, no sound. Yeah, I, I turned the sound off. I'll basically describe. So it, this is kind of a playground. I started off by building a ping pong table, and then I replicated and created the uh, hoverboard from Back to the Future 2. And I, I hit this brick wall because I'm not a scripter. But inside of this world, you build everything in virtual reality with 12 primitive shapes, right? You're limited to that. And then you're able to script similar to what uh, MIT created with Scratch, right? It's a visual scripting language where you're dragging and dropping elements to program, to animate, to have triggers, to, to, to allow different things to happen. And in this case, we were able to make a remote control flying hoverboard. You can see these giant ping pong paddles that I've made to just kind of a uh, social environment where you can go in and you can create these worlds. And, and there are actually jobs and careers that are coming up around world creation and world building using three-dimensional design tools, right? It's expanding, it's changing changing every single day. There's more and more ways to kind of interact with, you know, the content. And then, uh, you know, you see that, that technologies like touchless and hand tracking uh, are, are significantly improving the way that we can interact with things and allowing us to, instead of having to touch screens now, they have these, uh, you know, haptic feedback setups where you can just control a computer by waving your, your hands in the air. And that happens on the Oculus Quest as well. Um, and, and there are some amazing things that can be done. Uh, for anybody who wants to learn more, please feel free to reach out to me uh, via LinkedIn or via any other method that, uh, that may be provided uh, on that website. Or, uh, and on that uh, slide deck, there's some further information on other courses and things that may be offered in, inside of virtual reality. So I encourage anybody who's got a headset uh, to start taking a look at the educational ways that you can apply uh, virtual reality and, and things like augmented reality as well. Alex, we do have a, a couple of questions here. So one of the questions was, uh, what is this software typically used for? What is Tinkercad used for? Uh, so Tinkercad, I, I would say, is predominantly used for basic designs, right? So you're, using, you're doing basic STL designs, might be for 3D printing or rapid prototyping, could be for little game pieces to, um, uh, you know, build, build a board game or, you know, may, maybe some, some kind of role playing game or something like that. It, I personally, when I first got my 3D printer, uh, I got it from Home Depot and I, I had a broken stove knob that I couldn't use part of my stove. So I went. I found a design and I made some edits and made some modifications and was able to 3D print a stove knob that fit perfectly and matched perfectly with you know, my stove. And then I was into virtual reality early on. And I, I think in you know, 2013, Google Cardboard came out and they had a, a design that basically was uh, a, a free way to take a piece of cardboard, cut it up and turn it into a virtual reality headset by dropping a cell phone into it. And, that amazed me. So I started 3D de designing my own version of that and, and then, you know, mocking it up and modeling it up. And, and it was just a really fun kind of experiment. And then that, those can go into an animation program. You can make them move. It can go into SolidWorks and it can become a part of a machine. It can go into an, an, you know, a, a movie. It can go into a video game. It can go into Minecraft. It can become a Lego block design. Like there are so many things that you can do. Like here's an example right here. Like for those who are into the Minecraft thing, um, if you can still see my screen, you can mm -hmm. see there's the same design in Lego form. There's a Minecraft version, right? So these disciplines are, are, are really transferable and, and the skill sets are really transferable, yeah. Uh, is that uh, Tinkercad, is that a free website that folks can go to or do you have to actually uh, subscribe to it? 
very absolutely and completely free. And if there are teachers who are going to be using it, it really has a great platform to allow the teacher to set up a class and have the ability to not only see all of the student projects, but also go in and make adjustments or suggestions uh, in there as well. So uh, the, the interesting part about 3D design like this is it's becoming much more collaborative, that more than one person can edit at the same time. Uh, for the design and VR, the big difference that I feel from this beta that I'm involved in is the ability to be in a room with four people and, and design and create. It's like, it's like just pouring your brain out in front of somebody and letting them grab it and just kind of play around with it and add their own pieces oh, to it and it's really amazing mm -hmm. and I, I, know you mentioned, I know you mentioned earlier about workshops so do you actually teach workshops on tinkercad yes so this workshop i've been doing with young audiences i've been doing with the schools i work with nonprofits. Uh, i do it as a volunteer for verizon as well on occasion um, uh, you know, I, I work with schools and, and programs really anywhere that, that are looking to integrate this type of stuff. And I've also started developing some courseware that is in full virtual reality. I don't know if you can see the avatar and the skeleton. This is yeah. a, a skeleton assembly that's going to be done uh, in one of my workshops coming up. Uh, I was uh, just uh, selected for a grant program with an organization called Victory XR. And there's a link right here at the end. Uh, if anybody wants to take a look at it, it's basically a five week course and it's five sessions, but these are inside the headset. So uh, this is for anybody who's got access to an Oculus Quest. Um, for those of you who do not, I, I'm hoping to have a bank of them at some point and be able to work with different organizations to kind of integrate these on a smaller scale between, you know, maybe three to 10 students at a time at most and, and allow them to get into these tools in a hands on way. Uh, learn inside of these virtual environments and, and really kind of, um, I think, kind of take literacy uh, and understanding uh, of the future of design and the, the future of jobs and around this medium, which is really kind of a new way to design. Uh, there's some big changes happening too. There's another one, if anybody who has an Oculus Quest, uh, a program called Gravity Sketch just became completely free. It's an amazing tool that lets you design in, in 3D. Uh, and then there was a program by Google called Tilt Brush that I've used a number of times and actually did some great programs with, with the art program and BPS, um, animation, fashion design, and architecture uh, using Tilt Brush. And, and, and Tilt Brush just went open source. So that means that the code has been released to the general public and people can hack it up and modify it and make it their own and use it in their own games. And it's really interesting to see what people do uh, when, when code becomes kind of open and available and people can play with it and, and modify it in their own way. So. You know, if parents wanted to um, reach out to you because they wanted their child to kind of uh, take one of your workshops, how would they uh, best contact you? Well, if we're talking about the three-dimensional design workshops, um, what I would say is uh, I'd start with young audiences is probably the best way. I mean, if it's individual parents, maybe we can uh, put together a group. You know, I've, I know I've done some, some work with some pod schools and, and, and some kind of independent workshops. I have created workshops independently on on school and, and these VR classes here as well. Uh, but it, it, I typically do uh, work through young audiences as, as they are, um, you know, one of the, the great supporters of arts and arts integration and, and really do a great job of, of helping us get into um, to offer some insight into the things that we're passionate about. And, and for me, it's been, uh, you know, a fantastic opportunity to work with so, so many tremendous organizations and the schools and, you know, uh, you know, people like like everybody here on the call. It, it's just uh, it's great to share these things. And, and it, you know, I'm, I'm happy. And, and willing to, to talk about whatever is the best method to make this available. I've got a couple of formats that already exist, but uh, you know, if, if you're looking for something custom, um, uh, please reach out through through young audiences. I would say. And are, are you bilingual, Alex? Ah, uh, fully fully bilingual. I was born in Barcelona, Spain. My parents are Chileno from Chile. Uh, yeah. Sí, sí, puedo puedo hacer que completamente los entrenamientos en español sin problema. Así que, no. All right, all right now, all right. So that was the question that just came up. So then um, is it safe to assume that we're gonna see you in uh, many of the virtual Saturday academies at the different schools? I am happy to come back whenever you want to have me, ladies and gentlemen. This, uh, this, is, this is fun for me to, to kind of share these things. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's really just uh, a great opportunity to, to kind of showcase some things that can hope hopefully shed some light on, on different pathways for students. And, you know, if it's about access, if it's about technology, 
Um, it, you know, if it's about funding, there there are ways around these things, and we just if you really want it, you you, you gotta you gotta ask for it, you gotta fight for it, and you gotta work together to get it. Um, so so I've got partners that you know that can help, and I've got volunteer hours for different organizations and things like that. So yeah, you know, uh, let's make it work. Um, you know, this is just too fun for me to to not do. And what I've got on my face, if anybody sees my screen, is uh, is an augmented reality filter. Um, you know, I've been doing some work in AR as well, but I really like to kind of showcase the, you know, kind of evolution of of where these camera tricks have gotten. And uh, uh, you know, this is something that again, if you design in 3D and you can animate something, you can make your own filters very easily. And and there are interesting communities that are experimenting with stuff like this all day. So. Yeah, as I say, you remind me of uh, the little character, the Littles, the little cartoon character from the Littles. <laughs> Date my age there a little bit, but that's what it kind of reminded me of. Nice, nice, so, nice. Yeah, I, I definitely think you're going to have uh, quite a few phone calls coming your way uh, from many of the navigators to try to get you plugged in for our Virtual Saturday Academy. So. Yeah, vrbuffalo.org. Um, if you know, if you want to find out some more information, you can sign up right on this, you know, this document right here. Uh, Alex at vrbuffalo.org is an email for me as well. But uh, I'm really just again happy to share. Uh, glad to be invited, uh, Daytuan. It's always good to see you and work with you again. Uh, you know, hope to see everybody again soon and, and participate. And you know, it, this this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, this is uh, a part of a very long extended residency that can be done. I mean, you can never stop learning about this stuff, so. Awesome, awesome, man. Fabulous, man. This is definitely uh, an eye opener and definitely a game changer. So definitely would love to see many of our students and within our schools uh, take advantage of the system. And, you know, it's the way, way of the future. So definitely. Great right. day, Tom. Well, thank you Fantastic. so much, Alex, for joining us, man. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye now. All right, All right folks. So it's that time again. We have our Zoom to Teams video that we want to share with you guys once again. Our virtual academies will be moving from Zoom to Teams beginning February 6th. Many of you are already familiar with Teams, so we look forward to seeing you. That's right. All Buffalo Community Schools will begin running their own individualized virtual Saturday Academy starting February 6th. And we want you guys all to come back and join in and take fun in all the amazing programs that we're gonna offer for all ages and for all members of the community. You can help us make a big difference in everyone's lives. Hope to see you there. Make sure you check out the Buffalo Public Schools website to check out all virtual Saturday Academy activities and Microsoft Teams link to get all the information for virtual Saturday Academy. Be sure to ask your community school navigator for more information. Be sure to also tell all your classmates, friends, and families to participate. See you then. We don't want any of you to miss out on all the fun activities we have planned for you. We want you to stay connected, engaged, and safe. Virtual Saturday Academy programs will be offered through each of the community schools on Teams beginning February 6th. And remember, we are here for you and open to everyone. All right, folks. So by all means, please make sure to follow us on the BPS Community Schools on Facebook for more information. And also, if, if you can, in the chat room, can you guys take a moment, you know, before the end of the session and just kind of share with us, you know, what did you guys enjoy about the virtual um, academies so far and what you would like to see in the future? So if you guys, you know, at some point, just type in those comments, that'd be very helpful for us. All right, but without any further ado, we're going to bring on our third presenter, which is Kristen Brandt of our uh, Young Audiences of Western New York. Kristen, are you there? Kristen, are you there? Tech, are you there? I am here, looking for Kristen. Looking for Kristen. So while we're looking for Kristen, guys, go ahead and flood our chat room. Kind of let us know what you enjoyed uh, so far about the virtual Saturday academies that we've offered and what you guys would love to see as we uh, move forward starting next month with our individualized schools. We want to hear from you. Your voice is important. 
Gonna play a little Alex Trebek. Oh, we got one here. We have, I think others are, oh, nope, not that one. Sorry, wrong one. Go back to everyone. So we have here now, I like the presentation. Everything you are doing is fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. We appreciate that. And we're glad that we are living up to your expectation and we want to continue to do so. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. Oh, wait, here go another one. We have one from Miss uh, Tanya Staples. Programming is wonderful. The weekly hosts have been great. Hey, to all of our hosts, all of our anchors, and to everyone behind the scenes that make this happen. We're all in this together. Right. Any others? Any others? Come on, folks. Make those fingers up. Let's get those fingers going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Dun, dun, dun. Uh oh, I lost some papers. Nope. Let's see here. So I got a question here, and maybe somebody from the team might actually be able to help me out with this one here. So how can the community choose presenters or vendors? Hmm, that's a good question. So I would say- Oh, they twang, we have Gayatri here who will uh, be presenting a yoga session. All right, so that last question, someone asked, how can the community choose presenters or vendors? So. I would say best way is to reach out to your local community school navigator, let them know what your interests are and they'll be able to reach out to those uh, community uh, providers and vendors for you. All right. So without further ado, we are going to bring on Miss Dietri, who's going to do a little yoga from Young Audiences of Western New York. Oh, wait, but then I also see Kristen. So what well, we're going to go with yoga for now. Is that is that the plan, guys? Oh, Actually, if we have if we have Kristen, we can go with Kristen. Okay. I see Kristen. She, she popped up over there. Kristen, you there? You can unmute. Yeah. So maybe no, maybe yes. I saw you. You can't hide from me. I think she's I, getting ready. I can see you. Ah, there is Kristen. Hey. Dietri, we got you next. Don't worry, don't go too far. All right, Kristen, you just got to unmute yourself there. Bottom left corner with your mic. Oh, yes. There you go. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes, Hello. I'm in the main room, and we are going to do some mindfulness activities. I appreciate your energy, Daytuan. It is awesome. Yeah. So, first, I want to talk a little bit about opinion. You're like, what does that have to do with a calm and strong mind and heart? Well, we all have varying opinions about things, and it does not mean that we are wrong. So I have a little bit of an exercise to show you. So does anyone know what this is? Has anyone ever seen one of these? Not everybody at once, I'm overwhelmed, seriously. So no. this, this is something to clean my body that I got when I was in Japan. Any ideas? Ear. Ding, you got it. This is an ear spoon. So an ear spoon is what they use to clean their ears in Japan. In the States, we use one of these, right? But in Japan, they think this just shoves the wax back into your ear. They think the spoon scoops it all out, but we think that the ears don't get clean enough when we use this. So who's wrong? No one. Who's right? Everyone. It's all a matter of opinion. So with a calm heart and a strong mind, we really can open our mind to see other people's 
opinions. So I always like to start off with this. And those of you who know me know what this is. This is my mind jar. And my mind is nice and calm and settled, right? But what happens? Life. Life happens, my friends. And it gets all crazy in there. But with two things, it will come back to a calm center. Those two things are time and attention. So I want everyone to look at the mind jar, take a deep inhale through your nose and exhale, look at the pieces flying around and watch them settle and think about how this is illustrative of your life because we all have calm moments and we all have craziness in our lives. All right, so when I talk about the craziness in our life, we are the only ones that can bring ourselves to a calm center. My buddy Harris once told me, he's Jamaican by the way, so my accent not very good. He said, get excited man, ain't no one gonna get excited for you. So get calm man. Ain't no one going to get calm for you. It is your duty and your job to keep yourself calm, cool, and collected. It is not anyone else's job to calm you. So let's take care of a few ways that we can personally bring ourselves to a calm center. So number one. We all do one thing, and if we didn't do it, we bad. What is that one thing that we do? Anybody? Would that be breathe? That is breathing, yay! Game show, you in a car, all right? We all breathe, but we don't ever think about it. Do you ever think about your breathing? because it just happens automatically. If we didn't breathe, we wouldn't be living, we wouldn't be moving, we wouldn't be grooving. So let's take a few moments to think about our breath. I want everyone to just bring their palms up just like this, open palms. I want you to take your deep inhalation through your nose and exhale out of the mouth. Now let's do it with the hands. So we're gonna inhale, reach and bring it into our heart. Exhale, flip the hands and push to me as I push to you. Don't stop breathing or moving. Inhale, draw it in. Exhale out. Inhale in. And exhale out. One more time. And back to center. So it is said that when we breathe, we actually make ourselves smarter. We employ our brain, we add oxygen to our brain and that will help us to make a more informed, calm, smart, strong decision. Now, do you think we're good at making decisions like this or, or like this? Because the first thing that we do when we're upset is we get tense. Everybody experiences the minute you walk outside and it's 15 degrees outside. What happens? You hit that cold and immediately like, you just go right all in. How do we get used to that? I equate it to like jumping in a pool, a cold pool. So eventually your body warms up to that pool. If you are enjoying winter sports, let's say sledding or skiing, are you cold the whole time? 
No. Your body actually acclimates to it and gets used to the cold pool. So I want everyone to close their eyes and we're going to do that breathing technique, but now I'm going to give you a little guidance with the breath. Okay. So everyone close their eyes and you can place your palms upward or respective knees. I like to plant the feet right down into the ground and inhale. The tongue rises to the roof of your mouth. Exhale, the tongue relaxes. Inhale, imagine cool air circling all up in your brain. And exhale, warm air out of your mouth. Inhale, imagine that cool air circle as your tongue rises. And exhale, imagine that warm air out of the mouth as the, as the tongue relaxes. Inhale all of the air you've got up into the brain. And exhale all the warm air out. Inhale light. And exhale, darkness. Inhale a bright, bright light, whatever color you want. Mine's purple. And exhale out that darkness, that unknown. And bring the palms right to the heart. Blink your eyes. Look left and right, up and down. Open them wide and scrunch the face. And open wide. Will facial yoga and scrunch the face. One more time. And settle into a nice big smile. Nice. All right, we're going to stand up, my friends, and get our meditation movement on. So as everyone can see, I have set up an environment for myself. I've lit candles. Often I play soft music. I have my chakra banner hanging. I think that environment is very important. And if you can do tiny things, to bring your environment to a personal place that you love and enjoy and respect. It's a beautiful thing. You can do little things. You can hang tapestries or you can get a salt lamp or you can just light a dollar store candle like I did. Everyone bring sides of feet, calves, thighs, everything together and stand as tall and confident as you can. We're bringing our palms all the way down to the floor, reaching the fingertips to the floor, pulling the shoulders down. And let's inhale our arms all the way up and squeeze the temples with the biceps. Pick a focal point just above you on your next exhalation. Rise up on the toes all the way up on the toes and continuing to reach the fingertips to the ceiling, thumbs to the back wall and forgetting that you're on your toes. And breathe in through the nose, reach out through the mouth, reach even higher. Again, inhale, reach and exhale, reach even higher. And gently and as slowly as you can, plant the heels back down. Reach up out of the shoulders, face the palms outward and slowly reach outward and down as we press through water. Still inhaling through the nose. And exhale out of the mouth. One more breath. Inhale. 
Inhale up to prayer. And exhale, bend the knees. We're going to inhale, open up wide. And exhale, become small. Now you can do this, inhale, open as a workout or a work in. You can do it nice, light and arid in a meditative stance. Or you can add that resistance and strength and bring it in. Two more times, inhale, open. Exhale, become small. Last time. And back to center. Let's shake that off a little bit. Kick out the wrists, shake out the feet. And I just want to see everybody's palms just like this. Beautiful palms. And let's connect our thumbs. Now we're going to face the palms to the left wall. Inhale at center. Exhale, press the wind. Inhale, bring them back where they were. And then flip them over. And exhale, press the wind the other way. Inhale, bring them back in, flip them, and press on the exhalation. Inhale at center. Exhale on the press. And if you want to disconnect the thumbs and round the hands, you can make a ball. Two more each side. One more each side. Again, you can do this meditatively nice, light and arid. Or you can do it with all the strength you have, employing all the parts of your body. And back to center. Come to fight stance, drawing our forearms into our sides, knees bent. And take a deep inhalation through the nose. Exhale everything out. And let's play with our chi. Drawing the hands up and down, flicking the wrist. And two more. And back to center. Let's inhale, rise all the way up. Bring palm to palm, exhale to horse. Inhale, rise up. Exhale to horse. Inhale, reach for the wall beside you. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, reach for the wall beside you. And exhale, draw it in. Let's try those together. Inhale, horse. Exhale, reach. Now we're going to take that right hand. I'm going to swipe you as you swipe me. And land on the left shoulder. Lean forward, look over your foot. This is a little tricky. Now we're going to take that right arm, swing it all the way into the air, all the way up that left leg. We're going to circle that foot behind the other foot, all the way behind until it makes us sit down and bunch. Let's try that one again, all the way from the beginning. These are the stances of Shaolin. So again, this is something that you can do as a meditative practice, or you can get that strength, balance, and flexibility that Kung Fu offers. Inhale up. 
Exhale the horse. Inhale, reach. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, swipe in front and look over the foot. Inhale, rise the arm up, circle behind and punch. And back to center. So I want everyone to take a moment, check in with their chi. So there are many different names for chi, energy, spirit, but I know that we can rise our chi by self-centering. And I only know that because I practice it. So I want everyone to bring palm to palm, not touching, so close, but not touching. And you should feel that nice warm ball to the center of your hand. And if you can move that ball all the way to the end. And right back to the middle. And then one, 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 make it nice. So when we align our breath with our movement and bring oxygen to our brain, making ourselves smarter, we are doing a beautiful thing for our body and for our mind. We're being considerate and respectful of our breath and our bodies. So let's stand back up. We're gonna inhale, raise our wrists to the heavens, fingertips to the floor, come up on the toes if you wish. And exhale, flex the hands out, mean it with intention, press and come all the way down. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, press. This is also something you can do at your desk. You can just do it lightly. You don't need the big reach. You just need the breath aligned with movement for the best benefit of your mind, body, soul. We're raising that chi up, making our energy nice and strong. So again, I want everybody to show me your palms. I'm gonna take my palms, yes, I like it. And I'm gonna face them. So my palms are facing each other here. And then I'm going to inhale at center, exhale, pull them away from each other, draw my elbow back and the other arm forward. And then I'll do the other side. So again, aligning your breath with your movement, palms facing one another, inhale at center. And exhale, draw the elbow back, bow and arrow. Inhale, switch sides. One more each side. And back to center. Let's do two of the animals of Qigong, which is part of Kung Fu and I'd like to mention that Qigong is similar to what we call physical therapy. In other countries, they prescribe Qigong, specifically China, for medical ailments. And I know that sounds silly, but it works. Let's come back to our center. So we're gonna do an animal called the crane, which is also a beautiful walking meditation. 
We're going to inhale the knee and the arms up, open and set it down. Inhale the knee and wrists up, open and set it down. Do I look like a bird? Thank you. So that's one animal. In completely different contrast to that, without walking, we'll do tiger. So the tiger is to circle the hands and charge. Circle the hands and charge and let's bring it back and calm ourselves extend your frankenstein arms your monster arms forward Inhale, up, exhale, flip the hands and let them fall. Inhale, up, and exhale, let the hands fall. One more time. And now I invite everyone to come seated into Lotus for a guided meditation. So for me, there are a number of different styles of meditation. There is a guided meditation where someone helps you to visualize the things. Someone helps you to use your imagination. There is also a clearance meditation where you try not to think about anything. You just try to clear your mind. So we're gonna do a guided meditation right now. And ladies, right leg in front, gentlemen, left leg in front. Let's shake the frame, bring hips and shoulders to the ears. And bring our palms up, rub them together. And when we rub our palms, we're creating a little fire in between our hands. And we're still keeping our confident stance of the shoulders over the hips. And we're still breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And when your palms are fiery hot, Take a moment, place the palms directly over the eyes, drive the pads of the hands into the orbital bone and breathe in through the nose. Imagine the cool air circling up into your brain. Exhale out of the mouth. Imagine the dark, warm air come out of your mouth. And let's place our prayer hands to the crown of our head, pressing palm against palm. Imagine purple radiating from your body, your connection to all that is divine. Inhale purple and exhale purple. Moving our prayer hands down to our brow Imagine indigo radiating from your body. This is your center for intuition or your third eye, the things you already know. Inhale indigo and exhale indigo. Moving our prayer hands to the throat Imagine blue radiating from your body, your center for communication, 
how you talk to yourself and how you talk to everyone else. Inhale blue. And exhale blue. Moving prayer hands to the heart. Imagine green radiating from your body. Your heart chakra is your love of yourself and everything else. Inhale green. And exhale green. Moving prayer hands to the solar plexus or rib cage. Imagine yellow radiating from your body, your center for motivation. What motivates you? Inhale yellow and exhale yellow. Bringing prayer hands to the navel or belly button. Imagine orange radiating from your body. This is your center for movement. How you move through life. Inhale orange and exhale orange. Moving our prayer hands to the root. Imagine red radiating from your body, your center for stability. Inhale red and exhale red. Keeping eyes closed, place respective palms facing upward on their knees, wide open palms Make sure your shoulders are over your hips. Take a deep inhale through your nose and on your exhalation. Imagine all of the colors radiating from you. Imagine your colors mixing with my colors, mixing with all of the other colors of everyone in this Zoom right now and breathe. Send energy and concentration to colors that may not be so bright. Think about all the colors that are so bright. And breathe. And as you breathe with your palms facing upward on your knees, I want you to cut your body in half. With your imagination, make one part of your body the left side and one part of your body the right side. Imagine that in the left hand, there is a little red ball. That little red ball is the love and compassion that you provide to everyone else. Now these two parts of you, one part of you has love and compassion. The other part of you needs love and compassion. So the left side that has the love and compassion that you give to everyone else, I want you to use your imagination and creatively visualize that red ball traveling up in the air and landing in your right palm and continuing, continuously giving yourself that love and attention that you give to everyone else. You can give it back from the right palm up in the air to the left palm and breathe and know that not only do you need love and compassion, but you have and you give love and compassion. Everybody inhale through the nose and hold for four. One, two, three, four. Exhale out and hold for four. One, two, three, four. 
Inhale, hold. Exhale, hold. One more time. And now inhale, four, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale for four. One, two, three, four. Inhale for four. And exhale for four. Let's place our palms right onto our heart and deeply press our palms right into our heart. Blink your eyes. Eyes only look left, right, up and down. And then look at me and smile. So we can always bring ourselves to a calm center. I like to mention that if you have a big decision to make or even a small decision, I implore you to make three to five breaths before you make that decision, thereby bringing oxygen to your brain and making you smarter. So I just wanna to finish today with a little bit of sound. Everybody, Deep inhale through the nose, exhale out and hum. Mm -hmm. And let's try that with an ohm if you'd like. Inhale, wide open mouth, everything you've got. Oh. Thank you, everyone. The great in me sees the great in you. Thank you, Kristen. Yee! Very relaxing and soothing. So Thank again, you, Dayton. Thank you so much, Kristen, for joining us this weekend. And have yourself a wonderful weekend, folks. All right. All right, guys, as we move on. So our last transition video of Zooms the Teams. I promise we won't get you guys anymore with this, but I just want to push the message. Our virtual academies will be moving from Zoom to Teams beginning February 6th. Many of you are already familiar with Teams, so we look forward to seeing you. That's right. All Buffalo Community Schools will begin running their own individualized virtual Saturday Academy starting February 6th. And we want you guys all to come back and join in and take fun in all the amazing programs that we're going to offer for all ages and for all members of the community. You can help us make a big difference in everyone's lives. Hope to see you there. Make sure you check out the Buffalo Public Schools website to check out all virtual Saturday Academy activities and Microsoft Teams link to get all the information for virtual Saturday Academy. Be sure to ask your community school navigator for more information. Be sure to also tell all your classmates, friends, and families to participate. See you then. We don't want any of you to miss out on all the fun activities we have planned for you. We want you to stay connected, engaged, and All right, folks, so we are with our fourth presenter. We have with us Miss Gayatri from Young Audiences of Western New York. She's going to do a little bit more. Is that yoga with us as well? Yes, we do. We have some yoga um, scheduled for today, and I'm really excited to offer this. So first of all, hello, everyone. My name is Miss Gayatri. Some of you may have um, taking a few sessions with me before. I also do Bollywood dance and um, I have been part of Saturday Academy for a while. So I'm really excited to do um, yoga today with each one of you. It's going to be slightly different and I hope that you're ready to get up and really get moving. Um, 
This is actually a practice called through kidding around yoga. And what I like to do is offer the music as well. So we will be working with um, some music and really moving, really getting up and moving. So get ready, have some water nearby. And let's actually get started because I know we're crunched for time. It's almost time for Saturday Academy to end, which is super sad. We've had some great presenters, um, but make sure you have some space. I'm gonna switch my camera so you can see the space that I'm working in. Um, so make sure you, uh, uh oh, hold on. Whoa, technical difficulties, of course. Um, so make sure that you have your space ready, unlike me right now. I was, I was zoning out. Um, there we go. All right. So can anyone, can everyone see my little friend here? He's here with me, my little teddy bear. He is my yoga bear and he hangs out with me over here. Um, and he does some of his favorite yoga poses, but just like him, if you ever feel like you need some rest, if you ever feel like too tired, uh, you can always just come to a seat, a comfortable seat, and you can bring your hands to heart center. I really want you to understand your body. Um, yoga is definitely about body awareness. There's a whole slew of things that you can learn through yoga. But one of the main things that I try to share is understanding your body. And the only way you can understand your body is to really... Touch your body, you have to touch it, okay? So my first song that I'm going to share with you is called Every Little Cell. And tell me, if you can, think about where are the cells in your body? All over, right? All over your body, from your head all the way down to your toes. So in this song, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pat every little cell in our body. And all you have to do is pat, 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 and listen to the cues that's going to be offered and you will actually transition, move into a yoga pose, okay? So get up. This is our last session for today. So if you haven't been moving, you need to get up and let's move together, okay? So let us go. Ooh, sure sound, sure sound, sure sound. That's key. All right. Let's do this. Here's a fun song that you can sing. It makes every little cell in your body ring. Pat every single body part when you hear this chorus start. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Shake yourself, it's good for your health. Every little cell is happy and well. Shake yourself, it's good for your health. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Bend your knees in chair pose, please. Every little cell is happy and well. Bend your knees in chair pose, please. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Reach up high to the sky. Every little cell is happy and well. Reach up high to the sky. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Reach for your toes in ragdoll pose. Every little cell is happy and well. Reach for your toes in ragdoll pose. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is well here's one more make a lion roar i'm happy and well here's one more make a lion roar i'm happy and well every
Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Now let's do it faster. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. All right, how's everyone feeling? Can I get a thumbs up? Can I get something? Let me know. Are you ready? Does your body feel warm? Does it feel good? You found all the cells? They're everywhere, right? They are everywhere. So now we're gonna move into a really fun one. And these songs you really have to listen to, okay? I'm here so you can see the yoga poses in case you get lost. So make sure you look up at the screen in case you need a little bit of help. The next one is called Sergeant Salutations. And in yoga, we do sun salutations. So it's very similar. It's inhale up, exhale down, and then a few different poses, okay? And again, if anything, if you get a little tired, just follow what your little yogi bear here is doing, sitting in a nice comfortable position and finding your breath, okay? So let's do our next one. It is called Sergeant Salutations. So join me. And this one is a lot of fun. I really like this one, so. You gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta get up in the morning. You gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta, get up, you gotta salute the sun. Okay, kids, Sarge here. Just like you salute the Sarge, we're gonna salute the sun. Yogis, salute! Namaste. Namaste. Butterfly up. Butterfly up. Butterfly down. Butterfly down. Rag doll. Rag doll. Rag doll. Salutations are the best. Breathe in and out your nose. Stand tall in mountain pose. Take a break, take a rest. Salutations are the best. Ready for another round? Yeah! Yogis, salute! Namaste! Namaste! Butterfly up! Butterfly up! Butterfly down! Butterfly down! Rag doll! Salutations are the best. Breathe in and out your nose. Stand tall in mountain pose. Take a break, take a rest. Salutations are the best. Now we work harder, faster this time. Namaste. Namaste. Butterfly up. Butterfly up. Butterfly down. 
butterfly down. Butterfly down. Rag doll. Rag doll. Jump back. Jump back. Plank pose. Plank pose. Downward dog. Downward dog. Upward dog. Drop it in the chat. All right. Let's see here. Okay. We have one that's going to bring our heart rate up because we're going to be jogging. And guess what? We're going to be jogging through a jungle. It doesn't look like that outside right now, right? <laughs> so we're going to use our imagination. Right now in Buffalo, there's snow. But think about jogging through a jungle and think about all the things that you can see in a jungle while you're there okay so if you see a lion you're gonna make the lion pose right you bring your arms up you scrunch your face and you stick your tongue out <sighs> right okay so let us get on with our next one everybody's good so far give me a thumbs up everybody's moving and grooving all right thank you let's go I'm a jogging through the jungle. I'm a jogging through the jungle to exercise. I'm a jogging through the jungle. I better be careful. I better be wise. Cause there's a lion over there and he's starting to roar. Aria. He's so loud I'm gonna get down on the floor. Open my mouth wide and stick my tongue out. And let out a really loud lion shout. Aria.
Sav. Dead bug, Charak met. Warrior three, Lochem Shlishi. Flower, Perach. I went jogging in Sakala. the jungle. I went jogging through the jungle to exercise. I went jogging Ritzakala. through the jungle. When you're having fun, time really flies. I think I'll lay down and take a rest. I'm all stretched out and I feel my best. Let's go. <laughs> that one's a long one, so yes. <laughs> All right. How's everybody feeling? How was that jog? There was so many things happening. There was a turtle. It was a crocodile. It was a lion. I threw in a warrior too for you. Did you see your warriors? Were your warriors nice and strong? You have to have nice, strong warriors because you yourself are a warrior. Okay? So make sure you... You strengthen when you do your warriors, okay? Your warrior poses. All right. Dayton, how much longer do we have? Or do we have time for one more? You are good for another one. Yes, ma'am. All right, we are good for one last song. And what I want to share with you is one of my favorites because what yoga does, it not only helps our body mind, right, our breath, it also helps us get stronger, right, physically and mentally, okay, so we are going to be doing yoga makes you strong, and I want to make sure I see all your muscles, okay, all right, so last one, join me, this is the last one for the day, and it's called yoga makes me strong. Yoga makes me strong. I took a hike up the big mountain. Yoga makes me strong. Yoga makes me strong. When nighttime came, I saw the stars. I took a hike up the big mountain. Yoga makes me strong. Yoga makes me strong. A friend joined me and told a joke. <laughs> When nighttime came, I saw the stars. I took a hike up the big mountain. Yoga makes me strong. Yoga makes me strong. We took a long rest in a chair. A friend joined me and told me a joke. <laughs> <laughs> when nighttime came, I saw the stars. I took a hike up the big mountain. Yoga. A doggy joined me for my walk. Woof, 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 woof. We took a long rest in a chair. A friend joined me and told me a joke. <laughs> <laughs> when nighttime came, I saw the stars. I took a hike up the big mountain. Yoga makes me strong. Yoga makes me strong. A cat jumped up on my shoulder. Meow, 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 meow. 
Then came a cow to join the fun. Ooh. A cat jumped up on my shoulder. A doggy joined me for my walk. We took a long rest in a chair. A friend joined me and told a joke. <laughs> I took a hike up the big mountain. Yoga makes me strong. Yoga makes me strong. Come on! Then came a cow to join the fun. A cat jumped up on my shoulder. Saw the stars, I took a hike up the big mountain. Yoga makes me strong. Yoga makes me strong. Thank you. Awesome. yogis in the making there. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to just link um, a, a YouTube page to the yoga studio that I teach at. It's East Meets West, but it's, um, it's adult yoga, but you can always like connect with me if you want to find out more, um, and also through young audiences. Thank you again, and enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Take care. Thank you, Gayatri. Bye. Bye. All right, folks. So we have come to the hour, time of the hour. I probably said that wrong, but you know what I mean. So we got a nice little trivia. It's the health, body, and mind trivia that was put together by our fabulous, fearless friend, Lisa. So, Lisa, are you there? I'm right here, Dejuan, and once we get the answers, we are going to have a little drawing out of this silver bowl. And you'll just have to give me a little time to get everything together to see who our winners will be. I will announce them. And we will be giving away two Visa gift cards and three other cards worth $20 for tops. So, woo -hoo! Yeah, let's win some money, 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 money. That's real money. All right, folks. So there are seven questions that I'm going to ask you. And we're going to give you about 30 seconds to answer. And Lisa, they're supposed to put the answer in the chat room. Exactly. All right. So, so folks, just remember, Lisa is only human and needs to <laughs> tally things up. <laughs> Problem, no problem. All right, so you guys ready for the first question? Yeah? All right, here we go. So first question, is the true or false? Are your fingernails made of bones? True or false? All right, so we got a false there. Another false. Uh, true, true. Oh wait, where's my timer? I'm supposed to be timing this. All right, got about, i say about 15 seconds to go. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, no more answers. So the answer is. Do, 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 do. Boss, they are not made of bones. They are actually made of keratin. So I had the privilege of looking this up last night and keratin is a protective protein less prone to scratching or tearing in other cells your body produces. Yeah. 
Learn something new there today. All right, question number two. Who has more neck bones, a person or a giraffe? And beginning now. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, time's up. Oh, so let's see here. We have the same giraffe person. Same, same, same. All right, well, the answer is they both have the same amount of neck bones. Yep, they both do. So all mammals, including giraffes, have the same cervical vertebrae. Isn't that crazy, uh, Mr. Daytuan? Huh? Because you look at a giraffe, wouldn't you think it would have more? You would. You definitely would. I mean, that was my first thought. Like, that body, they got the same? But nope. Or that it would have more. But no, they have the same. Go figure. All right. Lisa, how are we doing? You want me to move on to question number three? Yes, please. All right, number three. True or false, your ears and nose never stop growing. So again, your ears and nose never stop growing. 20 seconds. True or false? Ten seconds. I got my ghost whispers in the back. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. The answer is true. So your ears and nose still keeps growing, but very, very slowly. So I guess we're not like Pinocchio, but. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number four. The largest muscle in your body is your heart. True or false? Beginning now. True. Do, 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 20 seconds. Do, 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 do. I'm looking at the right hand. 15 seconds. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Time's up. The answer is false. Your heart is not the largest muscle, but it's your gluteus. Maximus, otherwise known as your butt. <laughs> All right, number five, number five. How much saliva or spit does a person make every day? Is it eight teaspoons or eight cups? And the time begins now. Do, do, do. Eight cups, eight cups, 25 seconds, do, do, do. 20 seconds, 15 seconds, do, do, do. 10 seconds, get those answers in, and five, four, three, two, one, time's up, and the answer is eight cups. Good job, guys. Good job. All right. Question number six. True or false? Exercise is as good for your mind as it is for your body. True or false? Time going. 25 seconds. 20 seconds. 15, 10, 2, 2, 2, 2, 5, all right, 4, 3, 
two, one, and the answer is true because it continues to wear, oh, sorry. Exercise, keep our minds and our bodies healthy and happy. All right, here's our last question, trivia question for the day. Will wearing a mask help keep you safe from COVID? True or false? True, 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 false, true. True, good job guys, keep them coming, keep them going. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Ding, 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 ding. And yes, true. So guys, please continue to wear a mask because you and the people around you are precious. So guys, thank you for joining our healthy body and mind trivia. So we're going to give Lisa a little time to tally up. OK. Pull give some me a minute here. Do, 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 do. So guys, are you guys from my pre-K through second graders? Are you guys excited about going back to school on Monday? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know many of your teachers and your admin and even us, the navigators, we're all excited to see you guys as well. Um, I know it's going to be a little different, but nonetheless, we're going to make it through it together if we all stick together in this. All right. Okay. For the first $25 Visa gift card, dun, 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 roll. goes to Abu Jalo. Abu Jalo, are you there? And let me just say to anyone who wins, Mr. Detuan will be putting up my email address shortly. And you should email me with your name, address, and I will make sure you personally get your gift card ASAP. That means super quick. Okay, number two, Visa gift card. Elmer, put da -da 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 -da. We have someone who didn't give their last name, David from the Littles Room. David! For our first Tops card, valued at $20, we have Mrs. Anto, A-N-T-O. Anto, what? I what? know this person. We have for the second one, uh, the name is Pritom, P R I T O M. And for the final Tops gift card, Shantila. Shantila. Shantila, Shantila, Shantila. Congratulations, everyone. Woohoo! Woo you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for participating and knowing so much about your mind and your body. All right, folks, well, that brings us to the end of our show for today. We are so happy you guys all joined us and we're happy for all the winners. So we definitely hope you guys enjoy your gift cards. Spend them wisely. But again, it's not goodbye, but it is see you later. And we definitely want you guys to see us beginning February 6th at all of our community schools for our virtual Saturday academies. They're going to be great. And they're going to be huge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lisa.